Okay, so here I'm going to do the first of the um, Teams Work mock exam questions. So, Jack wants a program that's going to ask the user to input a quantity of numbers they want to enter, and then read in this value as input. So I'm going to ask him how many numbers do you want to enter? Repeatedly take a number until the previously chosen amount of numbers has been inputted. Calculate and output the total and average of these numbers. So basically, they're going to enter like a seven. Then I'm going to ask them for seven numbers, and then I'll tell them the average and the total. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, if I'm going to work out the total, I should start a variable at zero because I need to know the running total. Now, if I want to work out the average, I need to know how many numbers there are, but we're going to get them to enter that in. So numbers equals in input. Enter numbers amount. Let's check that's correct. Run it. Enter numbers amount, six, whatever. I'll put a space there. Right, now, the best way to do is to be a for loop, because a for loop literally loops a certain number of times. So if I loop, let's just print i and show you what's happening. So now, if I get and type a number in, like eight, going to print 0 to 7. So this will loop eight times, okay? So now we need to get in a number. So I'm just going to get in a number temp equals in input into a number. Okay, so that's going to um, get them to enter a number. Now I could get them, I could even write the number like here and put like an F string and if I was doing this properly I might even write like I so it actually prints out, if you don't know what that does, I'll show you now. So it would actually print out, like, we put 7 and it would say enter number 0. Now, of course, I would then want to put i plus 1. Um, and then it would say enter number 1, 2, 3, 4. But I don't need to do that in this program, so there's no need to add anything else. So if you didn't understand that, don't worry too much. That's only for a little bit extra. And it wouldn't get you any more marks in the exam, but just in case it wanted you to do that, that's how you could do it. So, right, so we're going to enter number. Now we need to make a running total. So total equals total plus temp, adding on to total. And that's all we do inside that loop. And then afterwards, we print out total. I'm going to do an F string so I can go total equals total. Average equals total divided by number. And there we go. That should work correctly. Run it. I'm going to enter 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which is a total of 12, average of 12, sorry, a total of 60. So that's the one way you could do it. Um, and it's the proper way. Uh, another way would be to start a box at 0 and then do uh, well, count less than numbers. And then you could do count equals count plus one or something like that. Um, and that would do the same thing. But um, the real way there is to use a for loop. Um, and a for loop, remember, is called a count control loop. So it might be here it says a count control loop. And that would be a for loop because it does it a certain number of times. Whereas a while loop is a condition control loop because it does things on a condition. So they might actually tell you what you've got to do um, so just be careful of that um, but there you go that's the first one let's go on to number two <clears throat> that there okay so these are the criteria and basically they're going to enter in some stuff which they give you i'm going to copy and paste that in i'm going to have to read all the quotes irritatingly though Actually, can I do a find and replace? Replace. Just quickly place that with that. Place all. Okay, there's two sides to it, annoyingly. Might have been quicker by hand. But anyway, place that with that. There we go. So we're going to get into first name, surname, room, and nights type. And if any of them are wrong, we're going to print not allowed. Okay, otherwise we're going to print aloud. So here is the uh, thing I would do. I would start, rather than doing loads of ifs that go if this and this and this and this, I would start a boolean with data correct equals true. So I'm going to start a box that says, yep, yeah, so far so good the data is correct. 
and then I'm going to check each one. And if it's not correct, I'll set that to false. And afterwards, I can just check if it's false or not. And then if it well, or if it's true and print the appropriate one. So if surname and first name are not empty, I might do that in one go because it feels like one thing. So I'll go if first name equals that. I could also do length zero, another one. Or how do I spell surname like that with no capital? Surname equals equals blank. Remember, it's double equals a Python. So if either of them are blank, we're going to set data correct to false. Okay. And then we just basically do this premise all the way uh, through. I'm actually going to copy and paste that down. What's the next check? If room. Is it going to be basic or premium? Is not equal to basic. Now, this is a little bit trickier because it's got to be either of these two to be correct. So, I'll show you what we're going to do in a second. Actually, I'll do, um, I'll do double equals room or room premium. Okay, so that's going to check if it's true. That's going to check if it's true. Okay, so if we put a not in front of it like this, that's going to say, is, is that not true? Is room equal basic or room equals premium? Not true. That's what that means. So I put a bracket around it. So I put the correct things in here that are allowed. And then I put a not at the front. And that will actually check if that is not true. Okay, now rather than going room, not, and that's not the same as doing this, which is what you might have thought um, you would do, room not equal basic or room not equals premium. Because the problem is that's always going to be the case because you're saying, is it not equal to basic or not equal to premium? Well, of course, it's going to be not equal to one of them because they're not the same. If you write basic, then that's fine, but then that one will be true. So then it's going to write this as false. And you, couldn't put, you can't put and because um, they can't, it can't be not equal to both of them at the same time. So the only way to do it is to check if they're true, but brackets around them and then put a not. Right, the next one, if nights less than one or nights greater than five, I'll put a little bracket around it because it looks neater. Data correct equals false, okay? And then we're going to go if data correct equals true, print allowed, else print not allowed. And let's have a look. Invalid syntax somewhere. Okay, apparently you can't do that in Python. Do I have to write not? There we go. Python's not C sharp. But you would have got the mark for that because you'd have used another uh, version of not equals to, um, which is fine. And you would have got the mark in the exam. It's the uh, problems of writing in about 17 different languages. You forget which one does what symbol. And Python's a bit weird with its uh, use of the word not. Most use symbols for these, although it does make it a lot easier, I suppose, for, for you to understand. So if we enter a blank first name and then all the rest is fine. Okay, why did that come up with that? Oh, I did not get in for the nights. Although, again, remember, in the exam, you would get the mark for that because some languages, if you type a lot of languages, if you type a number in, it will understand that's a number and set it to a number. Like it doesn't, um, whatever. Premium. Not allowed. But let's try valid data. Allowed. There we go. So that's how we do that one. A little tricky one. I suspect that's one that a lot of kids would get like four out of six. Um, but that's probably the way to do it. When you've got loads of checks to do like this, it's probably best to get some sort of box beforehand. And then, you know, because then you probably, I reckon most people would have got this one wrong. But that would only be one out of, say, six marks. You'd probably get five. Well, you get one for that. Two, three, four. Depends on how many marks this question was. It wasn't a real paper, but unfortunately I've copied it out of that and don't know what the marks for it were. But um, 
but maybe he'd lost two marks there. I think normally you lose a mark if it just doesn't work 100%, um, but you still get four out of six if, if you just got that wrong. Um, just be careful here not to use an and. It can't be both less than one and more than five. So just try to think of your logic on these ones. A lot of students mess up the logic of this. Just try to think about it like this one. If it's not either of these two, these are the correct ones, and you can put a not in front of it. That's a great thing to do. That's the trickiest one, really. All right, let's go on to the next one. It's actually quite easy, I think. <clears throat> so, create a function called new price. We should be able to go new price like this. It takes two parameters, the number of nights, and the type of room. Nights, room. There we go. Bang. Calculate and return the price to pay. Well, this is easy, um, really easy. So we'll do cost per night equals uh, 60. I said it, so there's many ways of doing this, um, and I'm sure, um, but I'm going to set it to 60 and then change it to 80 if it's premium. That's the only thing we need to do. So if room equals premium, Cost per night equals 80. I mean, I could have done an else here and done cost per night equals 60. I mean, maybe that will need so. I don't know. Actually, maybe I will change that. Um, now, it says here there's no need to validate the parameters. So that means that you can assume that the parameters are perfect in there. will only be premium or basic is the alternative, obviously. So then it has to work out the number uh, that returns the, the cost. So total cost equals nights times cost per night. I mean, that is the easiest one. And then we return total cost. And then obviously we can print new price five comma, oh no, no, what is it? Uh, nights here, 10 comma premium, which should give us uh, 80 quid, 800 pounds. There we go. That's quite an easy one in my opinion. That's the easiest one in the whole lot. So there we go. Right, now that's that one's done. Let's do the last one. So da, 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 da. there are a couple of other ways of doing that, but that's basically the gist of it. Right, so repeat continuously until the user enters zero. So we're going to start off straight away with a while true because we're lazy coders. Take an input of the number of hours the user has parked on whether or not the car is electric or not. So, right, so uh, electric equals input uh, electric car, yes or no, whatever, something like this. Okay, now um, number of hours, hours equal in input hours. So now then if hours is zero, we're going to break because it says repeat until the user enters zero hours. Um, simple as that. Otherwise, we're going to print. Now, actually, I've got to work out the cost. So cost per hour equals. So if electric equals equals y, the cost per hour equals 2, else cost per hour equals 4. And then we're going to just print it, calculate and output the total price. Suppose I should do it properly in a variable. Total price equals cost per hour times hours. Print. Um, I'll do it the other way. Total cost is total price. Whatever. Something like that. We'll be fine. I'll just break that up so you can see the different sections. So we're entering electric car, yes or no. Um, entering number of hours. If the hours are zero, we break the loop. If the electric is Y, we set the cost to two. Otherwise, the cost per hour is four. And then we work out the hours. And that should 100% do it. Yes, I'm electric car. I've done 25 hours. The cost is 50. No, I'm not electric car. I've done five hours. The cost is 20. You know, there we go. And then I enter zero. Uh, enter yes for electric car, zero for hours. And we immediately quit. Although some reason I did something weird there. Um, so let's just try that again. Zero hours, yet we quit. So there you go, that's the, the four done. I hope you uh, practice those on your lovely snow day.